G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this adorable little miniature schnauzer felt phone cover case. I've actually designed this one to suit and fit perfectly an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 6S but it will also accommodate uh, an iPhone 6 Plus which I have my daughter's phone has popped in there with a couple of minor adjustments that sits really well. It can also be useful, you could create it as a child's purse just by adding a little cord which I'll show you later. Simple to do, way more simple than you would think even though we get a really wonderful professional looking result these are fantastic for selling at markets and uh, you get the free download if you click on the link in the description below you'll be able to download all of your free pattern templates that will give you all the colours and all the instructions and the felts that you need. Get those printed out and I'll show you how it's done. So to begin with today, if you have a look at your downloaded template pattern sheet, you'll see that some of these pattern pieces are cut from what I call double felt. Double felt is simply two pieces of ordinary felt which have been joined together using fusible webbing, which is a fusible webbing paper that you purchase from your local craft store or sewing store. Uh, it gets pressed onto one side of the felt, peel your paper off, add your second piece of felt and what you end up with is a really uh, thick piece of felt with that bonding in between which works really well for this particular project. So I make up my pieces of fused felt first and then I cut my shapes from those sheets. So you will need to cut from your double fused double felt. You'll need to cut a phone case back and a phone case front. Make sure you transfer the markings of where our little velcro attachments will go and you'll also need to cut one full back head piece of your double felt. Now the next pieces are cut from single felt which has fusible webbing applied to the back. I've actually peeled the paper off of those so it's a single piece of felt and you might be able to see that it, it's got the little residue glue there. So your mask piece, your chin piece, your muzzle, your brows, your little eye circles and your nose, that's all very clear on your pattern templates. So to begin with our first task, a couple of other things we'll need is you need, I like to use Velcro, I'm usually not a fan of Velcro but in this case Nothing seems to work better and keeps everything nice and flat. So I've got my little hook and loop Velcro pieces and I'll be attaching one to the over flap and, and one to the front. You'll also need a couple of buttons for the eyes, a couple of small black buttons that will sit over those little irises there and create a nice little pupil. We do need a four hole button, there's a reason for that. We're going to be sewing a little eye highlight in there. So to get started our first task is to actually sew on our little velcro pieces. Now it's simply a matter of lining up your little strip. You can use velcro circles or dots if you like and in fact you can use any other fastener I just prefer the velcro. So what I'll go ahead and do is centre that one nicely and I will actually stitch around that little piece and then remember that when you put your little foam cover together your little top loop piece is lined up with that top line there that I've drawn in there and once that one is stitched on that will fold over and that's how your case will close. While I'm sewing those on I'm also going to sew just a top stitching stitch across the top of where that flap will sit, that front will sit, it just strengthens that edge and it gives it a nice professional finish there as well. So just straight across there, seam allowance, probably it's only tiny little seam allowances of about four millimeters. So there we have our two Velcro pieces stitched on. You can see that that flap will close nicely there and also a little top stitching line along there. Our next step is to sew the cover front to the cover back. Begin here at the side, same seam allowance and same thread color and we're going to start at the side here, we're going to go back and forth on your machine so that we've got that held, that corner held down nicely. Actually going to stitch all the way around, same back and forth here so that that side is nice and firm and then I continue around 
and do a top stitch around that whole top flap and link it up just as we did here it's just a nice finish so there you can see our little fine case all nicely sewn up that's a lovely neat finish and we can pop that one aside while we work on the little head so now we have our back headpiece cut, cut from our double felt and we're going to take our chin piece now the way that we press these on I actually use an ironing press you can use an ordinary household iron if you are using an ordinary iron just make sure that you use a very hot iron with a protective cloth and lots of firm pressure and also use a protective cloth if you're using an ironing press so our first piece to be fused on because you've peeled that paper away and you've got the fusible sticky webbing on the back is the chin piece and you'll see that, that chin piece will line up beautifully with your back head piece and that one gets fused on first so all on its own once that one is fused on our next piece will sit directly over it and you'll find that again it will line up beautifully and you will fuse your front mask piece if you've got any little edges showing don't worry about that at this stage because we can always trim those up if you've been very careful with your cutting you'll find it'll line up nicely so the mask piece gets fused on second over the top of the chin piece you see there and then our next step is to fuse our little eye circles right up and into those two corners now there's a reason we do it in this order so you'll have to trust me on that so we're going to push those right up into those little corners and fuse those on third so first the chin next the mask and then the eyes so now my little mini schnauzer is starting to come to life here you can see the chin mask and eyes are nicely fused on our next step is to do the same thing with our little muzzle piece and with our little brows we put our brows on now because we can just slightly overlap over the tops of those eyes there you can see that'll fit just nicely there's no guesswork with this the shapes are all cut so that they fit very well for you so press those on now that all of our pieces except for our little nose piece are fused into place our next step is to sew just a single seam line it's like a top stitching line on your machine you can see that I've actually ruled a little line from the top of the brow just to where the mouth starts there and I've actually I've used just a little Copic marker there in grey with the fine end and I've just put a few points in there for a line to follow so that I get that nice exact stitching line I've used grey because as the the ink just spreads a little uh, we get that nice little feathered look so if you have got a grey marker that'll work well you could alternatively use just a little grey pencil and you can get that little bit of feathering which softens that seam line so I'm going to sew that one down on the machine next step now that that little line is sewn in there I've actually sewn that line two times and I have just gone over that little seam line with a little deep grey pencil and just encourage that depth there our next step is to do exactly the same stitching around the entire outside of the head shape you can actually stitch as, as much of, as, of those shapes as you like you could go around every single shape I actually think it's only necessary to go around the outside because everything else is quite well sewn down and held down it's not going to come away so I choose a, a point that's not going to be obvious so I generally start around about here on the lower edge of the ear it's the same top stitching line a little narrower if you can probably around about three millimeters and just sew that one all the way around just give it a really nice neat professional finish and you can see there what a lovely professional finish that little top stitching gives and of course our little ears will be folded over and they have the stitching also next step is to press on your little nose and that one sits it's only around about four millimeters from the top of the white muzzle there situate it there make sure your little point is lined up with your little septum there press that one on 
Now that our little nose is in place, our next step is to fold our little ears over. I'll give you a tip for doing that. I like to press the whole little face again so we get this ear area nice and warm because the fusible webbing inside the ear goes all nice and soft and we get a lovely soft curve rather than that sort of puckering when we fold them over. So I'm going to warm them up and then fold them over and pin them into position. So there we have our little ears folded over. You'll find that the tips just sit right on the edge of that brow and just on the top of the coloured eye area there. So a couple of little stitches from behind now will just hold them nicely in place. Take your stitches through but not all the way through to the front of the ear. Just take some from the back and catch those ears into place. Now that our ears are nicely stitched into place there, we've got a nice little rounded curve on them there. Now we're going to attach our little face to the front flap of our cover here. Now our positioning for that little head, if you turn your little cover around, you'll see that I leave exposed around about five millimeters, five to six to seven millimeters showing above the top of the back line of the cover there. So you can see that's how it will look from behind. That's about your positioning. You need to check that at the front that your little face is sitting exactly the same either side. Now once you have that and you understand where that's going to go, the way that we attach this little one is by sewing the eye buttons on all the way through that flap on the underside. So we're going to be stitching all the way through and that's going to anchor that little head really firmly on that front flap. We're also going to pop a couple of stitches in just to make a little nostril with black just either side and that also will anchor the little base of that face to the front flap. So I like to first of all though I like to hot glue a T section of that face onto the flap first and let it dry so that I'm not fiddling with position when I'm sewing on those little buttons there. So I've got my hot glue gun ready and I know that that T junction is straight across there and it's not going to, hot glue won't interfere with my nose or my eye section. So I'm only going to put a little bit of hot glue right down the centre and you can pretty much follow that central line of stitching that you've already made. It really is just about holding it into position so that you can sew it. So I like to just pop a little cross there. have to work fairly quickly with hot glue. And then I'm going to position my little head. So my little head is glued into position there and that's nice and firm. And I can open that one up and I'm going to be able to sew my little buttons on my eyes and make my couple of stitches. Now, when you pop your buttons on, you want your button holes going straight across, straight across the top there. So not on a diagonal. And I'm going to get you to sew the bottom two holes in black, in nice strong black thread, just the bottom two holes to hold it in place. And then we're going to sew the top two holes nice and neat and tight in an off-white or a white. And what that will give us, of course, is a little bit of a white highlight on that button. It looks like there's a little bit of shine in the eye and it really animates the little face. You can see where I've positioned those buttons too. By having them at the top near the brow, we get that soulful sort of look. Now while I'm doing that, I'm also going to just do two or three little tiny stitches right where you see that curve is just from the outer edge and in. And they're just two little holding stitches right the way through that back, which will hold that in position there. So there we have a little mini schnauzer iPhone case all completed. You can see that sewing the little tops of those buttons with the white thread has really animated those little eyes. It's definitely worth doing. If you look very closely there, you can just see those couple of little stitches put in there that anchors everything together. 
Now this particular design I designed to perfectly fit an iPhone 6 or a 6S but my daughter has an iPhone 6 Plus and I'll just pop that one in there and you can see that that will fit beautifully. All you'll need to do if you're making it for, for a 6 Plus is obviously you can see there you just have to adjust where your Velcro is going to sit to suit your project but you can see that it will still accommodate that iPhone 6 Plus really well. They look so nice when they're all filled out. Now please remember too that this little project isn't um, useful only for phones. Of course it could be a little can be a little child's bag just by adding a simple little cord and the way that I would do that is before we actually attach our little front face I would pop my little cord across there right on that bend and I would machine zigzag across there and you'll end up with a lovely little pouch a little child's bag especially somebody who lives with a little miniature schnauzer as I know so many of you do so I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have certainly give it a thumbs up that would be beaut stay tuned because I've got so many more phone cover designs coming up and we've got all sorts of characters dog breeds don't be afraid to um, comment on my video and let me know the breeds that you would like to see or the characters you'd like to see and I'll get busy on those for you remember most of all to pay it forward because everybody can and until next time it's Huru from me